Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Lion's Table. Let's take a moment to enter into the presence of God by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let God's word, which is truth, fill us and give us strength. Let us contemplate his great love for us, his sacrifice on the cross, his mercy, grace, and promise of eternal life through Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the word who was at the beginning, was with God, and is God. From Mark, I'm sorry, uh, love believes all things. Did you know that Jesus marveled at faith? You can find that in Luke 7, verse 9. But he also marveled at unbelief. And that's found in Mark 6, verse 6, which says, Therefore, son of man, say to your people, the righteousness of the righteous man will not deliver him in the day of his transgression. Neither will the wickedness of the wicked man cause him to stumble on the day he turns from his wickedness. Nor will the righteous man be able to survive by his righteousness on the day he sins. If I tell you the righteous man, if I tell the righteous man that he will surely live, but then he trusts in his own righteousness and commits iniquity, then none of his righteous works will be remembered. He will die because of his iniquity he has committed. And that was from Ezekiel 33, 12 through 13. Any righteousness found but in us of not in us is not our own, not of our own doing. My righteousness will one my righteous one will live by faith, and if he shrinks back, I will take no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who shrink back and are destroyed, but of those who have faith and preserve their souls. By faith, we understand that the entire universe was formed at God's command, that what we now see did not come from anything that can be seen. Hebrews 10, 38-39, and Hebrews 11, verse 3. There was a highly valued servant of a centurion who was sick and about to die. When the centurion heard about Jesus, he sent some Jewish elders to ask him to come and heal his servant. They came to Jesus and pleaded with him earnestly. This man is worthy to have you grant this, for he loves our nation and has built our synagogue. So Jesus went with them. But when he was not far from the house, the centurion sent friends with the message, Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy to have you come under my roof. And that is why I did not consider myself worthy to come to you. But just say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority, with soldiers under me. I tell one to go, and he goes, and another to come, and he comes. I tell my servant to do something, and he does it. You know, that one part there really, really impresses on me my spirit. Just say the word and my servant will be healed. That's what we're talking about, folks, believing in the things of God and that all those good things, including healing, come from him. Let's finish that. When Jesus heard this, he marveled at the centurion. Turning to the crowd following him, he said, I tell you, I have not even in Israel found such great faith. And that was a reading from Luke 7, 2 through 9. We should wonder, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? To some who trusted in their own righteousness and viewed others with contempt. Jesus also told the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector. The first thought highly of himself, and the second thought little of himself. In fact, righteousness and undeserve, righteous, unrighteous and undeserving, lastly referring to himself as a sinner. Luke 18, verses 8 through 13. The point being, God sees with what disposition and design we come to him. And that was about the centurion. Jesus could see what disposition and design the centurion made that request to have his ser servant healed. In Luke 18, about the Pharisee and the tax collector, what the Pharisee said shows that he trusted to himself that he was righteous. We may suppose he was free from gross and scandalous sins. All this was very well and commendable. Indeed, he went up to the temple to pray, full of himself and his own goodness. The favor and grace of God he did not think necessary. Let us beware of presenting proud devotions to the Lord and despising others. The tax collector's address to God was full of humility, of repentance for sin and the desire toward God. His prayer was short, but to the purpose. And he said, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. 
But we know that when Christ appears, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. 1 John 3, 2. The word who was at the beginning, was with God and is God, is the one true living God who is all loving, all merciful. Love believes in all such things as love is from God, as well as our being, our joy, our faith, our salvation. Amen. In closing, a reading from 2 Timothy 2, 8 through 15. Remember, Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, descended from David, as proclaimed by, and this is obviously Paul talking, my gospel for which I suffer, to the extent of being chained like a criminal. But the word of God cannot be chained. For this reason, I endure things for the sake of the elect, so that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Jesus Christ with eternal glory. This is a trustworthy saying. If we died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he will deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. Remind the believers of of these things, charging them before God to avoid quarreling over words, which only succeeds in leading the listeners to ruin. Make every effort to present yourself approved to God, unashamed workman who accurately handles the word of truth. And also a reading from 2 Timothy 2, 24 through 26. Reject foolish and ignorant speculation, for you know that it breeds quarreling. And a servant of the Lord must not be quarrelsome, but must be kind to everyone, able to teach and forbearing. He must gently reprove those who oppose him in the hope that God may grant them repentance, leading to a knowledge of the truth. Then they will come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil who has taken them captive to his will. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Well, thank you for joining us on this Sunday edition of Lion's Table. We hope this has been a blessing to you as always. Uh, If you like what we're doing here, please like and subscribe on YouTube or on Rumble. If you're on Rumble, please subscribe and and click Rumble. As always, if you have any prayer requests, leave those behind or any comments. We'd love to hear from you. And we are so grateful that you are listening to us for all our listeners. We are blessed to have you. And as always, we invite you to join us again next time.